Thomas Green here with Ethical Marketing Service. Um, I am continuing my business questions, so I'm um, going to get started. And the first one is what are the top mistakes that small businesses make? Some of the mistakes that small businesses make are in relation to often scaling is difficult, hiring too late or too soon, and a lot of it's to do with cash flow, not knowing what's coming in and what's going out on a regular basis and where they are day to day, month to month, and also the emphasis on sales. So most um, businesses don't have enough emphasis on sales. That's why a lot of businesses uh, go out of business, um, a lot of new businesses anyway. It's something along the lines of half business, half of the businesses that are started um, fail in the first, I think it's two years. And then of those, um, after five years, it's something like 90% of them are gone. And so if you just took those two principles and you said, okay, sales is no longer a problem for you. So acquiring customers is no longer a problem and you're aware of um, the money situation day to day and you're handling it well. The percentage of businesses that would actually fail um, if those two issues were taken care of is significantly less than um, what it currently is. So yeah, um, cash flow and managing it and being able to ensure that you have enough money for certain things and being able to predict when certain things are going out and coming in, you know, invoicing, paying, and then also an emphasis on getting new business. Next question is at 35, how could I start again and become wealthy? Realistically, Anyone can start again at 35. It is slightly dependent on your skills. So if I had to start again right now, I'm pretty sure I'd be fine. We'd need to define wealthy. So what, what does wealthy mean to you? Presumably, like I've said in previous videos, I'm going to go with what most people, quote unquote, think are uh, is wealthy. So it would be let's say tens of millions in cash. So, you know, not assets, actual cash in the bank. Most people would consider that to be wealthy. I suppose I could rephrase the question in order to give you an answer, which is, could you start a business at 35, a successful business, which would make you wealthy? And the answer is yes. But in order to determine whether or not you could start a successful business is down to your characteristics, your drive, your skills, your determination, and your perseverance. Those are the things which I'd consider. Some people have family responsibilities and you know it's more difficult for them to start again, especially at that particular age. What I would do in that instance is if you're, let's say, in employment um, or you're thinking of going from one one business to another, meaning you're, you've started a business but you want to start again. What I did, uh, me and my business partner, what we did is uh, we had a certain amount of money saved up that if the business, when we started, the business made no money at all, we were able to keep going for a certain amount of time. So that's one thing that I would recommend that you do, is that you put everything you have into it, meaning um, effort, time, effort, perseverance, and you treat it as though you don't have that safety net. But if it is the case that you have to use it, then it's there for a certain period of time. Next question is, how long do founders wait to take a salary when launching a startup? I mean, I don't know what the statistics are on that, if there are, in fact, any statistics that are available. I think the question is, how long should I wait before I take a salary as a startup? I do think that if you're an owner of a business, I think you should take a salary, um, but the salary you take is in relationship to the size of the business. So if it's a startup, and let's say, I mean, it's dependent on what sort of if you've had any capital injected into that startup. But if it's a large 
amount, then obviously you can take a reasonable salary. If it's, uh, if it's none or if it's a small amount, then you should attempt to take a small salary. The, I mean, what most business owners declare as a salary is the minimum amount that you can take. And so I would recommend doing that. The, the problem with not actually taking a salary as an owner or a founder is that the business looks like it's performing better than it is because you're working for free. Um, you're probably the person that cares the most about that business um, and you're not being paid anything. So as quick as possible, you should take some form of salary, um, even if it's small. Next question is, what is the biggest business secret in the world? Um, I actually had a look over these uh, questions before I put them in. My last couple of podcasts or videos, I was just doing it on the fly and I didn't really know what was going to come up during. But this one's in there because of the emphasis I want to place on the fact that there are no secrets. There is no biggest business secret in the world. There, there, there may be something, um, Earl Nightingale had something that he, he did, which was called the strangest secret. Um, and it was in relationship to setting goals. And the reason he called it a strange secret was because of the amount of people who actually took action on doing it. And also the how powerful it is to do that. So is essentially saying it might as well be a secret because of how powerful it is. But the, the term secret in business is or has been used previously historically and has been more popular on the internet uh, because of the reach of it and because of the, the marketing side of things. You need to understand that if anyone's trying to sell you a secret, then it's not a secret. As it's often the case that information isn't new, it's just recycled. So I have, you know, learned a lot of these principles that I'm sharing with you from someone else. This isn't new from me. I might have my own take on things, um, which I hope that it is valuable. But at the same time, there's, there's very few secrets. And I would encourage you to stop looking for secrets and rely on yourself. What's going to make your business better is you being better. So Jim Rohn said, in order to do better, you need to be better. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. And that is what I want to encourage you to do. Stop looking for secrets. Uh, it's all in the hard work. It's all in the education and application. So it's up to you. And don't allow anyone to tell you that there's a secret that you can get from them because it's probably not true. Next question is, what are businesses for women. I had a, a question in my last episode and it was about age and I think I have the same answer for this particular one. Any business that a man can do, a woman can do and vice versa, there's no business that's excluded for women and it, the, the market doesn't care about your gender. So if you're a successful person then you'll be rewarded by the market or at least you're more likely to be rewarded by the market. And if you're an unsuccessful person, then most likely your business will fail. It doesn't care about gender. Now, there are, let's say, a, a small percentage of the market or a, a small percentage of people who may discriminate based on gender. So if you have someone who says, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do business with you because you're a woman, I would expect that to be a, the vast minority of, of people. But if that's the case, then you just move on from that person. There's, there's plenty of business out there. And also, if they're willing to go with, if that's the type of person that is theoretically going to be your customer, you, you want to filter out those people anyway. Believe it or not, you don't have to do business with everyone. So if someone holds that opinion, then you can count yourself lucky that you don't have to do business with that person. Uh, business doesn't care about gender. So you know, you can, if you're a woman, you can do any business that a man can do. Next question is, how do I start a new business with no experience? Um, it is 
perfectly possible to start a business with no experience, much more possible if you have money to do it. And the reason for that is because if you can hire someone with skills, essentially your job as a business owner is to be the owner of the business, is not to do, it's not the doing of the thing. Right, so if we took any example, so I earlier on I saw a question about a plumber. So if we take plumbing as an example, let's say I wanted to start a business and it was about plumbing. Now I know next to nothing about plumbing. And so it would be poignant for me if I wanted to start a plumbing business, I would have no experience. So the question is, could I start a business, a plumbing business? And the answer is yes. So all I'd need to do is to hire a plumber pay a salary or perhaps pay a plumber a cut of the job and all I'd have to do is open my plumbing business and deliver the clients, I'd get the work and then I'd send a plumber out to do the job. Now it's important to understand that if I don't have plumbing experience then I would need to uh, do as much research as possible to determine if that person I'm sending out is actually capable. And that's important. But the reason I use that example is that I know nothing about plumbing and yet I know I could start a plumbing business. Um, and the reason why I'm confident I could do that is because I am very good at marketing. And there's an old phrase which says that if you if you're good at marketing or if you know how to do marketing you can be in any business essentially because you know how to get the client and that's a that's a lesson for you to know so um, really the business you're in is not the thing itself so it's not the plumbing you're not in the plumbing business really you're in the business of getting customers and that's why my emphasis has always been on marketing is because that's sort of the most important part of it. So I could go and I could learn how to be a plumber. Um, I could spend all those years of doing all of those things and learn, but basically without the customer who's willing to pay me, there's really, I mean, except for myself, of course, I could do my own plumbing, but apart from that, there's very little value in knowing it if you don't have someone who's willing to pay you for it. So the skill is, as a business owner, the skill is acquiring the client. It's not really in the thing. Now, if you do have some experience, that's better than having no experience, but there are plenty of examples of people gone into business and they don't know anything about that field and they're very successful in it. So, I mean, the only caveat to it is that you need to, like I say, either pay someone a salary if they're an employee, or it needs to be some sort of cut of the job in order to get them to do it. Next question is, I want to quit my job and start my own business. Where should I start? I alluded to this in one of the previous questions, which is, I think you should have a certain amount of months to support yourself if the business doesn't make any money. And I think that's important just because if you, if you quit your job and you don't have any, um, any support, any savings, that's going to be quite difficult because very new businesses fluctuate in their performance. You never quite know because no one knows about you and you don't have any existing customers. I would start part-time if it's possible. So I would do all of the things that you have to do in business over a longer period of time whilst you're working. So an example of that might be I'd get my website, um, I'd know how to do all the skills that, that um, you need in your business. Um, I'd consider lining up all the relationships that I need and then when you have all those things sorted and you have um, a few months, uh, as many months as possible ideally, where if the business doesn't generate any income, then you can keep going for a certain period of time. You can support yourself if the business can't pay you. And then once you are prepared, 
ideally you've got some clients so or you've made some sales so um, it's sometimes referred to as proof of concept so have you proven that there's a need for that business if if there is a demand for you and you've got all those other things that I mentioned lined up then you can go into your job and you can hand in your notice and um, you can be relatively confident that once you leave you can throw your whole self into that and you're fairly well prepared it's unfortunate um, but a lot of people quit their job and they don't uh, they're not prepared meaning um, they haven't got all of those things that I talked about and they have to figure out those things instead of looking for work and basically there's there's no proof that that business works so not only are they unprepared but there's no proof of concept so those are the things that I would do so get prepared have a sometimes referred to as a cash buffer and then you can quit your job with a reasonable degree of confidence that you're going to be okay for a while and don't forget to work your ass off next question is what's so hard about starting a business the reason it's so hard is because you're new meaning no one necessarily knows about you and uh, you need to be able to essentially take a salary as a business owner when there isn't one so when you're creating your business you're essentially uh, creating income for yourself because if you just take an income from from a, as an employee they've already done that for you so they've got all the clients and they're giving you money that those clients are giving them whereas if you're starting in business there's nothing there's a, there's essentially an empty bank account unless you're putting money into it the actual delivery of a product or service is not that difficult unless you're innovating something extremely complex actually starting a business basically you've got a bank account an empty bank account and then it's up to you to go out and find those clients generate that business in order to give you the salary that you would have had in a job but the interesting thing is even if you were to go out and find uh, let's say you got some sales if you're at an online business or you got someone to pay you for the service often that's not enough so you need multiple clients and there's no uh, there's absolutely no guarantee that they're the a it's actually going to go well so it might go wrong and then you have to give the money back or they may just be a one-time uh, client in which case you know you just have to go and do it all over again so basically I, I suppose the summary to the question is you have to get people in the market to voluntarily give you money uh, instead of just doing it once as an employee so and it's you know people want their money people need their money so you have to be to add so much value that they're willing to give you their money voluntarily and you're new so and no one knows about you next one is how do I start a business in a field that I don't have much knowledge about is it possible to do this without going to school the second part of the question is an easy one yes it is possible to do this without going to school um, but it may be beneficial to do some sort of course it depends on you I don't find going to school or academia to be particularly helpful I prefer to learn by doing and I've learned a lot on the internet as opposed to uh, traditional courses but that's up to you the first part how do I start a business in a field that I don't have much knowledge about I've already touched on that a little bit if you don't have much knowledge about it it depends on whether you want to do the deliverables or not if you do want to be the person who's providing that product or service either creating a product or delivering that service then you need to know about it and if you don't um, have a preference about whether or not you're the person to provide that service or create that product then you just need someone else to um, to do it for you and 
again, I mentioned that you either need to pay someone a salary as a employee, or you need to pay someone a fee if they're like a sole trader. Next question is, what is the most powerful business quote for you? I've already said it once today, and maybe it's not the most powerful one, but it's the one which has stuck with me the longest, and I think it's certainly one of the most powerful quotes, and it is Jim Rohn, and it's, if you want to do better, you need to be better. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. And it's it's simple, but it's there's, there's a lot of learning that you can take from that in the sense that I already had a question about you know what's the biggest secret well it's it's up to you um, and I, I once heard I think it was at Oxford Union and Alan Sugar was being asked you know what what can you tell me what's the biggest thing about business or what's the the secret about business something like that and he said it's up to you you know unless you have a rich uncle that's willing to support you and do it for you, then it's all gonna be down to you. And I know that doesn't help, but that's the truth. If you wanna make a success of your business, it's down to you and no one else. And I think that human beings have a tendency to want to be rescued in some form, or they want someone to come along and make things easier for them. And the more you can realize that that person's never gonna come, and it's all down to you, then the better, because either you're going to uh, knuckle down, work hard, and make a success of yourself, or if you, if you realize that and you don't want to go through that hard work and determination, then you can get a job because there's benefits, um, there's advantages to, to being an employee, you don't have to deal with all that. Next question is, how can I get a startup loan for a small business? Now, this is gonna be anecdotal. I like to give my answers to you based on experience as much as I can, but I have always found um, business lending to be unappealing, meaning it's much like, it's like personal loans, but it's worse in the sense that if you're lending to a business, uh, I just I already mentioned the number of businesses that go out of business is is very very high, and so basically business lending is only for businesses that can easily afford it. So if you're an existing business which has been trading for a while and your numbers look good, then you know maybe business lending is okay for you. You'll get one, but if you're a startup then the way I would answer the question directly is how can I get a startup loan? I would do it personally. So if you can get a personal loan and lend it to your business, that's what I'd do. But I mean, you're at a disadvantage because starting up a business is difficult enough and then you're adding a loan on top of it. So as much as you can, you know, it, it may be necessary, but as much as you can avoid that, then I would. But if you're convinced about getting a loan, I would do it personally because business loans are difficult to get for a startup. Next question is, is it worth it to start your own business? It depends on you. I would suspect that if you're asking that question, then I would probably think it's probably not worth it for you because I, I've never... I don't think I've ever, that's ever even cons um, come into my mind, that question, is it worth it? There's a phrase which says something along the lines of entrepreneurs work 100 hour weeks so they don't have to work 30, something like that. And that has to be, if you're going to go into business, that has to be you. So you have to be willing to work extremely long days and you know, not even be paid for it uh, because, I don't know, if something goes wrong or, you know, it just has to be done and no one else can do it and you can't pay anyone and therefore, you know, the, the money has to come from somewhere. Someone has to pay for, pay for your time and um, no one's going to do that if you don't have a client or you're very young. So I would say, you know, starting a business isn't for everyone. Um, I think it's more fashionable than it ever has been 
because of the internet. But um, if you're not 100% convinced, I would wait until you are because it's no small thing to start a business. I would just not go into it. I mean, everyone has doubts, but I would go into it with as few doubts as you as you possibly can. Next question is, how do you use social media to promote your business? There are multiple ways to um, to use social media to promote your business. If you're at this stage, meaning if you're asking this question, then I would focus on one media as much as you can. And I would get really, really good at that media. And when you have a handle on it and when you have an audience and when you've got some experience in either posting or the advertising side of it, you can potentially move on to the next one. What I think most people struggle with uh, around starting to use social for their business is the number of them. If you start with one, then that won't happen. So if we pick one at random, rather than starting on seven different social media platforms and getting totally overwhelmed at having to post to multiple platforms and create content for various different ones, if you start on Facebook, for example, and you really get to use that and get as much benefit as you can for a certain period of time, then uh, you can start introducing other medias incrementally. I think some of the quickest ways that you can utilize social media to promote your business are with your existing your existing community, for lack of a better word. So I've seen uh, local businesses make use of social, especially platforms like Facebook, because it's people they know. So... Um, if you're looking to get started on social and let's say you've got you know 500 facebook friends or something it's news to them that if you start a business they'd want to know about that and they you know if you've got if you're actually friends with them maybe they might introduce you to someone or they may have a need themselves so that's how i'd do it next question is i am 37 years old am i too old to start a business no um, it depends on your skills and your circumstances somewhat, but um, 37 is too old. If you'd have said you are 57, um, I would say no. So, and actually, some of the some of the biggest best businesses have been started by people at the end of their career. I would get started, but. If I mean business is not like a professional sport or something, so unless unless your business is to do with being a professional sports person, then I would say no. Thirty-seven. I mean, you've still got you still got decades, many decades of your career left. So um, that's an easy one. No. Next question is: Which problems do small businesses have? Which problems do small businesses have? Small businesses have tons of problems. And I have used the analogy uh, of being in business as firefighting. And I don't think that's an uncommon uh, perspective to have. I'm trying to get behind the uh, intention of the question. It sounds to me like, you know, what can I sell small businesses? But maybe it's I'm attempting to go into business and I'd like to get some problems. I'd like to know some of the problems in advance. I've alluded to a couple of them and I'll stick with them, which are cash flow and the ability to get customers. Even, um, even mature businesses, I think, still have problems with customer acquisition. So if you want the, bro the biggest problems, they're that, those two. Next question is, what did it feel like to start your first business? If it's exhilarating. I mean, I ethical marketing service wasn't, legally speaking, it was my first business, but it wasn't my first venture into business. I've done lots of things prior that were variable in their success. Um, but it, actually, when you start a limited company, it's it's variety. So, and variety is a human need. You know, we all like to do things which are new, and it's exciting. Again, I'm trying to get behind the intention of the question. 
Why would you want to know what it feels like to start your business, your first business? It sounds like you haven't, because if you had, you'd already know. So I'd rather than commenting or asking questions like that on the internet, I'd go for it and do the best you can. And obviously, if you're not quite ready yet, you do it anyway and just limit the risk that you have. Calculated risks. Don't just fly into things and put a load of money into it. Um, start small but do start. Next question is, what should you do if you want to be an entrepreneur but have no background in business? Should you take a crash course of some kind or perhaps find someone who knows what they're doing? It's sort of similar to a question that I've already had, but I think I kept it in because of the first part, which is what should you do if you want to be an entrepreneur? And it sort of comes back to something which I said before, which is it's fashionable to be an entrepreneur at the moment. And you really need a better reason than just, I want to be an entrepreneur. I think some people have that. I mean, I certainly have it where I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be an employee, even if it meant you know, doing undesirable work. I'd still, I'd still want to work for myself in some form. No background in business. I mean, the, the good thing about um, about business is that you really only need to learn how to do one thing really well to at least get started. So an example of that is when Ethical Marketing Service was first started, basically all I focused on and all we did for a long time was Google Ads. And we knew how to do Google Ads really well. And we branched out, so we're... Um, because of the fact that um, there's a need for it and we had additional people who um, could take on those skills, it meant that we could do multiple things. But just because you have no background in business is not a reason to not do it. You just have to do one thing for someone really well. You're solving a problem for someone. So my analogy is someone in business with an existing business has they have their business, but they don't know how to how to do Google Ads, and therefore they search for an expert in Google Ads, and there we are. And that's what we know how to do. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem that you have no background in business. Should you take a crash course of some kind? Uh, I think that would be better than not doing it, but you need to get, I mean, the more you can educate and apply that education is gonna be beneficial for you, but it doesn't have to be in a formal setting. You know, if you're going to be in business, you, it's a learning thing and it nev you never stop. So don't think that you're going to take one course and that's all you need to do is ongoing. So, you know, I'd say take the course anyway, if you can, because it's going to, you're going to need to learn um, ongoing. The last part of it is about perhaps find someone who knows what they're doing. That sounds like some sort of mentoring to me. I actually think that doing both would be good. So if you can find a mentor or like a coach or something or someone who has experience that they're willing to share with you, you're shortcutting the learning curve. So if, say for example, someone was about to uh, go into digital marketing and they had no background of it, if they were able to get me as a mentor, they'd be shortcutting all of that information that I have, that I learned, um, and that would be extremely valuable. Yeah, I think you should do both of those, but if you don't do both of them, then you still need to learn from somewhere. Next question is, what are the reasons that people, that keep people from starting their own business? Fear is a big one, and I actually think it's, in some cases, justified fear. As I don't want to be too much of a downer on this podcast and keep reiterating the fact that the majority of businesses fail, I think that's the biggest reason. If you knew for sure that your business was going to be a success, then you know there'd be no reason why you wouldn't start it. The only pe the only reason people don't start a business of their own, um, apart from you know perhaps the increase in responsibility, is the fact that they're afraid that it will fail, and it's a justifiable fear. Um, and so, uh, but you can never you'll never know. You know, you have to be the best possible person you can be 
and work as hard as you can and most likely uh, if you do those two things and you're reasonably smart then you'll be fine. Next question, how can I find a business mentor? I mean there's, there would be plenty of um, business mentors around so there's plenty of people who do business coaching. I think I'd add in a an additional word into that question which is how can I find a good business mentor and I would look at it like you look at hiring anyone so you know you, you have a particular job that you need doing which is your business mentor how would you go about hiring a plumber or a window cleaner you know you'd look at reviews perhaps um, testimonials or references, you'd look at their reputation, you'd look at their cost perhaps, can you afford them and if you, I think rather than, it, providing it's affordable to you, rather than um, holding off on it, I would hire a few of them so and find which one which is good for you because although it may be the case that you might find a good business mentor, you might not gel with them and um, you know it's important that you get along with that person so I would um, yeah I'd, I'd split test them next question is having your own business the only way to become a billionaire no um, but the I would say the majority of billionaires um, ha are involved in either business or property. So another way of becoming a billionaire is, is property or at least some of that um, net worth would be to do with property because you need to put it somewhere. But the other way to do it, the, I, th I would say the shortest way to do it is to marry someone who's a billionaire um, and then you know you are also one. I would look at the reasons why you want to become a billionaire um, I think again is one of those fashionable things. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to become a billionaire but I think you'll find that most billionaires they're doing their business because they like to do their business. There's some people who are online talking about you know the laptop lifestyle and they're sitting on the beach and you know there's the best thing I ever did creating a business and all this. It's, it's fake so if you think that being a billionaire is going to solve all your problems then is probably not the case. You you get more problems through becoming a billionaire. First of all, people want to take that from you, both in legal means and in illegal means. You'll have family members who will want to perhaps take some of that money, or you know they're going to want some. You'll have old friends or distant family members getting in touch with you. Um, you'll have it'll be difficult making friends and perhaps because you, you don't really know whether they're interested in your friendship or your money um, there's all sorts of problems from becoming a billionaire I'm not saying don't do it I'm simply saying that um, most people when they become a billionaire you know it's not the defining thing which is going to make them happy really people become a billionaire because they have worked hard on something and the way you measure the success of that work is in money. So um, the easy, easy example to take on that one is Jeff Bezos. Um, whether you like him or not, he worked extremely hard on Amazon. Amazon became extremely successful and therefore he became a billionaire. I think I'm going to conclude there. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you need any help with your digital marketing, visit us at ethicalmarketingservice.com and I'll speak to you soon.